aquatic macroinvertebrates or water bugs are small creatures that are visible to the naked eye, have no backbone and live all or part of their life in water. They are part of the aquatic food chain and a source of food for larger animals such as fish, frogs and birds. Because they are found in almost every water body, are easy to catch and have different tolerances to pollution, macroinvertebrates provide an indication of river health. However, you will need to record where you are sampling in order to accurately assess the health of your waterway. For example, standing water and wetlands will generally have a lower diversity than flowing streams. The type and number of macroinvertebrates you collect will also depend on the time of year, the flow of the river and how many habitat types there are at your site. Look around your site and identify how many habitats are there. These will include water plants, stones and gravel on the stream bed and amongst fallen branches and twigs. Also check the flow of the stream and record where the habitats you have identified are in still or flowing water. You will need to sample in as many of these habitats as you safely can in order to collect an adequate sample size of 200 macroinvertebrates. Step 1. Collecting the sample. There are two types of sampling methods. These are called kick sampling and sweep sampling, and this refers to the way macroinvertebrates are collected. These methods are best used together to ensure that all bug types at your site are collected and recorded. However, due to occupational health and safety considerations, only sweep sampling along the edge of the stream should be conducted with school students. Sweep sample. Sweep sampling usually takes place on the edge of the stream and is used to sample for macroinvertebrates that live on the edge of the river. Sweep sampling is the recommended method for school students. This type of sample will generally not pick up all the bug types at a site as some habitats will occur away from the edge of the stream. Before you begin, prepare your tray or bucket by putting some water in it. When edge sampling, use a short upward sweeping motion. Make sure that all habitats are sampled, including fringing vegetation. Stop regularly to transfer macroinvertebrates into the bucket or sorting tray. Rinse any mud or fine silt from the net before transferring the sample into the bucket or tray. This will make sorting easier. Edge sampling should include a range of habitats such as logs, tree roots or fringing vegetation. Kick sampling. Riffles are areas of fast moving water within the stream channel. A technique called kick sampling can be used to sample in riffles. Kick sampling is not recommended for school students due to the occupational health and safety risks of students entering water. To conduct a kick sample, face downstream. Hold the net in front of you with the opening facing upstream. Disturb the rocks underfoot by vigorously shuffling and kicking. The current will sweep dislodged macroinvertebrates into the net. Move slowly upstream. Stop regularly to transfer macroinvertebrates into the bucket or sorting tray. Rinse any mud or fine silt from your net before transferring the sample into the bucket or tray. This will make sorting easier. Step 2. Sorting your sample. When you have finished sampling, you can sort the types of bugs you have. Make sure there is some water in the sample tray. Tip the contents of the nets or your bucket into the trays. Observe the water bugs in the tray. Fill your ice block tray with a small amount of water. Transfer bugs into the ice block tray using plastic spoons, pipettes or paint brushes. Sort the macroinvertebrates into the cubes in the tray using different cubes for different types of macroinvertebrates. Step 3. Identifying your macroinvertebrates. A person trained in macroinvertebrate identification should be invited to assist with the identification as it takes many years of practice to correctly identify some water bug types. The trained person may be a water watch coordinator, professional person such as a CMA staff member or a local government staff member or a teacher trained in water bug identification. Use the water bug detective guide to help you identify the species. Count the number of macroinvertebrates and number of bug types. Step 4. Recording the results. Record the information about the number and types of bugs you have collected on the field recording sheet provided in the Water Watch manual. 
The sensitivity score provides an indication of the tolerance of each macroinvertebrate by pollution and is sometimes called a signal score. By completing all calculations on the recording sheet, the health of your waterway can be assessed based on the abundance and diversity of the macroinvertebrates you have collected. To fill out the recording sheet, first tick the bug type if present. Then enter the number found of each bug in column B. Refer to the weight table for the correct weight factor for the number found. Enter the correct weight factor for each bug in column C. Multiply the bug sensitivity rating, column A, by the weight factor, column C, and enter the answer in column D. Once you have done this, add up column C, weight factors. Add up column D, this is the sensitivity rating multiplied by the weight factor. Add then up the number of bug types. You now have all the information you require to calculate the stream pollution index based on the abundance and diversity of macroinvertebrates at your site. Macroinvertebrates are only one way of assessing a site and there may be other factors influencing the site. Recent rain and releases of water from a dam are two of the many local factors that can affect the abundance and diversity of macroinvertebrates at your site. It is best to sample in spring and autumn to keep track of any changes to the macroinvertebrate abundance and diversity at your site. Step 5. Cleaning your equipment. When you're finished with your macroinvertebrate sample, release the bugs where you found them. Do not re-release the gambusia. Rinse or spray your equipment with a disinfecting solution that contains benzoconium chloride as the active ingredient. This will help prevent the spread of the chytrid fungus this fungus affects frogs and is known to occur in New South Wales. Before you leave your site, remember to rinse or spray your gumboots as well.